at his voice and trembles at his voice how great how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God Thank you so much, Joe, for taking us through that lovely time and that lovely song, just bringing our hearts into a right place this morning. Well, now Victoria is going to take us through our time with the children. So hopefully, Victoria, you're there, and good morning to you. And uh, I'm going to pass over to you, Victoria, so you can take us through through this yes, time. Or catch up with the children. Over to you, Victoria. Thank you. Good morning, children of God. It's lovely to be here again this morning. Now, today we are going to continue from what you started off last week, because you were learning about how to be the light and the salt of the earth. So today we're going to continue with that, but I'm going to start with something I have on here, because I was thinking, how do we think about how we can be Christians in our daily lives and how we can think about how the law that we have in our land applies to us. Now, I've got this on here. Now, can you tell what this is? It is a lamp. Now, I tried turning it on, but it wouldn't come on. I tried flicking the switch but it wouldn't come on. I tried a few times. 
Can you think why that is? Ah, aha. I need to plug this in. Now, let me have a go and plug it in and see if it will work. Oh, yes, the light comes on. Now, the reason I've done this is to show you that we can use the light for different things. We can shine it on ourselves like I'm doing now. I can shine it around the room. I can shine it on other people. But the reason I chose this light is for us to have a think about why God says we are the light of the world in Matthew chapter five. Now, let's put that down for a moment. Now, God wants us to be the light of the world. And sometimes we as Christians, we can do that. We can just shine the light on us and forget about other people. But God does not want us to do that. He wants us to plug in our light. Now, we need to plug that, that cable to a light source. And our light source is Jesus. And how do we do that? How do we plug our light into Jesus? Now, we can do that by reading the Bibles every day, by praying, and making sure that what we do, like the laws that we have in the land, that what we do shows other people who are looking at us to know what God wants us to do. So, the challenge for today is to see how we are going to shine our light for other people to see God in us so then we can draw them to come to God because God wants other people to come to him he wants us to be disciples to tell other people about God and we can do that and we can show that by how we act and what we do so today we are going to be doing lanterns to help us think about how we can shine our light now I've, I've got some little helpers here who've shown me how to make this but I'm, I've sent the instructions to your parents, but I'm just going to show you quickly. Now, first, you will need a pair of scissors and you will need an A4 paper. Now, some people might have colored paper and some people might just have white paper. It doesn't matter. You can use white or colored paper if you have. Now, the first thing you need to do, now you can write words on your paper. You can write, oh, this is how I'm going to shine my light for others to see what God wants us to do. You can write little things on there. I've written here, shine your light. And another one I've written, Matthew 5, chapter 70, chapter 5, verse 17 to 20. Or you might just write about little things that you can do that you can show people love. You can be generous to people. You can be kind to people. So you can write different things on there. Now, to make this lantern, you get your A4 paper. You see it? You get your scissors. The first thing you need to do, you're going to cut a strip off the edge like this. Now, this strip that you cut off is going to be the handle for your lantern. So put that one aside. Next, you're just going to fold your paper halfway lengthways just just in half like that and we're going to make like little cuts on it now we're not going to cut it all the way down because then it will come off so just little cuts like this and once you've done that open it up and you fold it the other way There we go. It's going to look like a lantern. I'm going to do my blue printer style just to show you what I've done earlier. And you're going to attach, remember the strip that you cut off, you're going to attach it at the top. And you can see on that, I've written Matthew 5, 17 to 20. Now, if you're using a white paper, I'll just show you what my little helper did earlier. And he did the sun because he was thinking about a light source. But our light source is going to be Jesus. We have to plug it to him to make sure that we learn and listen to him and do what he's asking us to do. And this is what my little helper has written, says, I am the light of the world. That's what he's written on his. And 
these lanterns, well, you can make as many as you can. And once you finish, I want you to hang them up in your room just to remind you that you are the light of the world and Jesus is our light source. And that's where we have to plug our lights in because he will tell us what to do. He would show us how we should behave and how we should follow the law because God's word said he did not come to change the law but actually to fulfill it. So for us to follow the laws that we have and make sure that when others see us, they know that we are special people, that we belong to God. Now, before I leave you to do the activity, let's have a little prayer. Shall we all pray, please? God, we thank you for being the light of the world. And we thank you for choosing us to shine your light into the world. Lord, help us to be your light so that when others see us, they will come to you and get to know you in Jesus' name. Amen. So at the end, we'll get to see all your lanterns and see all the different patterns that you've made. Now we're going to go over to a song and you can sing and dance and enjoy the song. And after you do your activity, right, God bless you all. It was great to have Victoria. That was lovely. I really love those lanterns. Um, and I don't know what paper you use, but at least on the image I have, that paper was glowing even without a light behind it. That that was fluorescent orange. Um, I was also thinking, Victoria, she did that. I tell you what, I'd love to have you as my teacher. That was absolutely fantastic. And you know, it said, God is good all the time. God is good all the time. And it was just lovely to hear those reassuring words, isn't it? About how God's goodness to us. I really enjoyed that song. So just a few notices for you this morning. Um, the first one is to say uh, that we've got an Alpha course starting shortly on Monday the 18th. So if either you or a friend would like to find out more uh, about being a Christian, about the Christian faith, and maybe those questions that you've really wanted to ask but never had maybe the courage or nobody's ever answered them for you, this is a great idea where you can go and ask those questions and find more about what it means to be a Christian uh, and those questions of life. We've got life groups on this week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, and we've got the notes going out shortly for that. So just to say, if you're not in a life group already, really recommend it. I'm in one. I love it. It really gives me a real boost in the week, in my working week. So just to encourage you, if you're not in a life group, really encourage you to join one uh, of those. We've also got a joint service with Wallingford. Uh, I believe it's next week on the 24th. So it'll still be on the Zoom link. We'll send that through to everybody. But just to say it's a joint service together. And that's great. And we get a great big family together for that service. Um, also, can I just say this? I don't know what it's like in your household, but sometimes what we have uh, around this time is a, something like, Dad, do you know what the Zoom link is for this morning's service? And everybody who searches to find the Zoom link for the morning service. Um, well, one of the things I want to just mention is that we've tried to improve the way that we communicate. Uh, we have some software that sends out reminders so that Chris AK or others, they can send reminders out to everybody, but it's only as good as the data that we actually have for you. So if we haven't got the right email address or right phone number for you, maybe it's going to your wrong email account, you want to go to another email account. If you would let uh, Chris AK or the office uh, know at Ridgeway, you can see the contact details on the website. We just want to make sure that we're getting in touch with you on the right email address or the right text number. So if you could just check if you're fine, that's great. But if we're not getting through to you and maybe not even signed up to be on our contact list, please just let either Chris AK or the office know and we'd be delighted to add that to you. So we're now going to pass over to Joe for another time of worship. God bless you. I don't know about you this morning, but are you hungry? Are you thirsty for more of God? Are you thirsty for his presence? And it's good to be in that position if you are thirsty, if you are hungry. Just open your heart right now to him. Ask him to fill your heart with his Holy Spirit, with his presence. If you sing a song called Hungry, I Come to You.
distractions are right now let's let his words really speak to your heart and mind and declare and remember what Jesus has done for us let's turn our attention towards Jesus let's really worship him in Christ alone my hope is found he is my life my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground is drowned and storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still and striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Ever blood me from his hand to 
beautiful, Joe. Thank you so much for that. Well, uh, this morning, and hopefully you've had a message about it that came through this week, we're going to have a time of communion. And I think it also could be good. There's um, some people are under a degree of stress at the moment, and I'm thinking I've got uh, two sisters, one who's in the NHS, one who's a teacher. Um, can think of people like them, and I can also think of uh, people like Peter, who sadly lost Ursula recently, who's grieving at this time. So I just wonder if uh, somebody in the church family this morning would just pray for those that may be uh, particularly under stress at the moment and feeling tired or grieving at this time. So over you to you, church, if somebody would pray for those people under stress and those people who are grieving at this time. Well, I want to... Amen. So thank you everybody for your prayers there and uh, you know we've had a time for prayer but maybe there are things that have come out of that that you'd like to talk to somebody. Um, can I just say that if you'd like to talk to somebody after today you can ring Chris AK, you can ring any one of the elders or any one of the others brothers and sisters in Christ that you have in the church because we want to actually walk with you together at this time, we want to walk with you so don't be alone, just reach out to a friend, reach out to one of the church leaders, and we just want to be there for you. So God bless you this morning. Uh, we're going to pass over to Gareth in a moment, who's going to be uh, taking us through uh, sharing the word of God with us, which is so important. It's just such a good food that we need for our week ahead. Uh, just also wanted to remind you to say, uh, Joe has reminded me to say that there is the youth group this afternoon, I believe at three o'clock, Hopefully all the young people will have the link to that. But again, if there's a problem, you haven't had the link through and you've never maybe been before, if you contact Joe, you can see uh, details, I think should be on the website, uh, or you want to contact the church. If you haven't got the link, then obviously get in touch with Joe and be delighted to have you along at youth group this afternoon at three o'clock. So, um, and apparently I'm invited along as a visitor this afternoon. So I'm really excited because uh, they say sometimes who let the dads out. Well, I get to go along this afternoon and to meet everybody and say hello. So I'm really looking forward to that. So God bless you. And now over to Gareth. Gareth, good morning to you. Morning, David. It's great to see you. Are you well? I'm very well, actually. Um, yeah, I think, you know, Gareth, it's one of those things that people say, are you OK? Are you well? <laughs> and I think at the moment, I almost sometimes feel guilty to say, uh, actually I'm okay and I, I think it's interesting because there are sometimes actually it is even one of the challenges because I think sometimes some people are actually doing okay their families are unaffected at the moment or relatively affected and then some families are major affected and it almost is kind of both ways it's kind of difficult if you like it's difficult if you're in the jam but I think in some ways you you think well actually I'm all right at the moment and if you do have food and you do have a job and you do have health it's pretty good right now. Um, so I think it's a really challenging time for the church about how we actually all kind of, you know, keep together and look after each other. But I'm doing fine. Thank you, Gareth. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. We're well. We're well. It's great to be with you all this morning, just looking um, at the screen. It's great that so many people have joined. Uh, as David was sharing, we're living in unparalleled times. And, you know, for these times, we need God to meet us and strengthen us and sustain us, maybe like no other time of our life. And so what I want us to do is just to pause for a moment. We've spoken already about shining light out to others, but I love the way that Victoria spoke about actually plugging in to the light source. And so I'm just going to ask that we take a moment and that we ask that God speaks to us, that God speaks to me, that God reveals something of Jesus to each one. And so I just want you to be still in your home. You may be alone or with your um, spouse. You may be with your children. You might have dogs and cats running around, but just if you can, just take that moment. And say, Lord, would you speak to me this morning? Would you encourage me? Would you strengthen me? Would you sustain me through your word and by your spirit? In Jesus' name. Amen. I was very moved this week. I was invited by Open Doors to log on to their event where they were 
promoting to Parliament their annual world watch list. For those who don't know, Open Doors is an amazing ministry that supports up to 340 million persecuted believers around the world. And as I listened to their stories, their testimonies, I realised that their understanding and their experience of suffering and struggle is often very different to ours. If you've been a Christian for a number of years, you will have heard people teach essentially that if you come to Jesus, he will make you happy and wealthy and healthy. The problem is, when we read the New Testament, we don't find those promises. Now, it may be true that Jesus makes us one, two, or all three of those things, but I don't believe that the New Testament gives us a cast iron guarantee. In fact, Jesus said different things. In fact, Jesus called those who would follow him to take up a cross. He told them that they would not be immune from suffering. Instead, actually, they may be more susceptible to suffering because people in the world would turn against them because of their faith. And yet, wonderfully and gloriously, Jesus gives us this promise that he will be with us even to the very end of the age. Now, why does it matter for you and for me that we have a right understanding of biblical teaching concerning suffering? Well, it matters because we're living in a world that's going through an unparalleled par pandemic. So far, over two million people have lost their lives. We've seen over 80,000 people in this nation die. We all know people who have either lost loved ones or lost their jobs, who are struggling with lockdown or wrestling with home education. It's important we know, therefore, that God has a purpose, not just a global purpose through this pandemic, but God's got a purpose for you and he's got a purpose for me. So as I was praying, I just sensed that God wanted to speak into our lives this morning concerning rejoicing in tough times. This is something that I'm still working through in my life. And so I will refer to some of my own experience. But in some ways, I want God to speak to me this morning just as much as I want him to speak to you. And so if you've got your Bible, I wonder if you can turn with me to Romans chapter three, sorry, Romans chapter five. I'm going to be reading from verses three to five. Here Paul says this, that we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. You know, I remember the first time I ever spoke on this passage. And I remember saying that we don't rejoice because of our problems, but instead we rejoice despite them. The problem is when I come back to the passage, I'm not sure that that is what Paul is saying. I believe that Paul is saying in the passage something altogether deeper and altogether more profound. He says that when we run into problems and trials, we rejoice. Why? Not despite them, but because of them, because we know that through them, God wants to bring change to our life, that God wants to bring through those trials and through those tribulations a greater good. Now, if this was the only passage that indicated that, I think I would question my understanding of it. But throughout the New Testament, we find that this is taught time and time again. Let me give you four quick examples. 
In Acts 5, verse 41, we discover this, that the apostles left the high council, rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to, to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. They rejoiced because of their suffering, because they believed that God had counted them worthy to suffer because of him. Then in Philippians, Paul says again in verse 29 of chapter 1, for you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering for him. Then James, the brother of Jesus, he says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come wet your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. And then lastly, 1 Peter 4, 12 through to 13, Peter says this, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials that you are going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ and in his suffering. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, I think, summarises this brilliantly when he writes this. The Christian's reaction is not merely to put up with trial. It is not just to be happy in spite of it. It is not to be happy in the midst of it. It is to rejoice on account of it, because of it. Now, maybe you're struggling with what I've said so far. And the truth is, I'm struggling myself with these truths. But when we read the New Testament, we don't think for a minute that the apostles enjoyed being flogged. We don't think that they delighted because they were rejected or imprisoned. However, we do know that they found great joy in the purpose that God would accomplish in it and through it. Let me just clarify again by using an example from our own life. 1995, Tracy and I were on holiday in France and Tracy suffered a number of seizures. She was taken um, by ambulance to a hospital and then she was flown by helicopter to another. And when I arrived at the hospital, the doctor told me that the probability is that she would either die or live in a permanent vegetative state. And I want you to know that I cried out to God and I prayed for healing. I prayed for restoration. But as I read these scriptures, I discover that I shouldn't just praise God despite the situation, but in it and through it, believing that God has a purpose and will bring because of that situation, a greater good and greater glory to his name. And so Paul tells us in Romans here that we are to be people who rejoice in tough times. We rejoice when we suffer. Why? Well, Paul lists three reasons. Firstly, he says this, that when we rejoice in tough times, it produces endurance in our lives. There's lots of things I would love to know about the Apostle Paul, but one thing I know for sure is this, that he was a big sports fan, because Paul often uses the metaphor of sport in his writings. Paul knew that the Christian life wasn't a sprint. He knew that it was a marathon. But when I'm speaking about a marathon, I'm not just speaking about longevity. I'm speaking about overcoming obstacles, overcoming different barriers, overcoming and enduring. When we were in Manchester, one of our youth workers was also an outward bound leader. And so we established a charity and we were paid essentially to take young people out from the city into the country. And one day we took about 20 lads up to the Lake District. And I remember us climbing up Helvellyn. We were going to take these kids over Striding Edge. And they set off at a seriously brisk pace. And for the first one or two miles, they were laughing at myself and my friend. They were calling us the old blokes at the back. 
but actually after 10 miles they were exhausted and when we got to the ridge of striding edge they were terrified the reason we took them there is that we wanted to teach them endurance we wanted them to understand that life wasn't just a sprint it was a marathon and that they needed to discover how to overcome obstacles simply by putting one foot in front of the other and as we rejoice in god in the midst of our suffering and as we rejoice in god knowing that he will bring transformation in our life through our struggle god teaches us by his spirit endurance in order that we can learn how to overcome every obstacle simply by walking and trusting in him simply by putting one foot in front of another the second thing that paul suggests is this that as we rejoice in tough times that that endurance produces strength of character in our lives as a pastor over the years so many people have sat with me and talked and very often people ask the question what does god want with me what does he want to do through me and of course there's varied answers for that but essentially the bible teaches us that god's primary plan primary purpose is to transform us in order to be like Jesus, to cultivate in us joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, those evidences of the spirit that were so evident in him. And so as we rejoice in the tough times, God has that opportunity to teach us endurance. And as we persevere as we progress then he develops within us a new strength a new resolve a new character i had the privilege this week of spending an hour with his fr a friend of mine my friend's wife has got a terrible condition which means that her personality now just switches like the flick of a switch it's tragic to see the change in this lovely lady, but actually what is glorious is to see the change in him. How through this tough time, how through his rejoicing in spite of the sorrow and even because of it, God is changing him and conforming him to the image of Christ. And thirdly, we find that as we rejoice in tough times, God doesn't just produce endurance. He doesn't just produce character, but he gives us a hope of salvation. Now, let me share with you the two verses that immediately precede the three that we've already read. In Romans 5 verse 1, Paul says this, therefore, since we have made, been made right in God's sight by faith we have peace with God because what Jesus Christ has done for us Paul there is speaking about justification that God has made a judicial statement over our lives because of Jesus because he bore our guilt because he bore our shame then we have been made eternally right with him then in verse 2 paul says because of our faith christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand paul knew what it was to stand and he encourages us his readers to stand not to cower not to shy away not to run from suffering or trial or tribulation but he says because of grace because of this undeserved privilege we now stand now those are glorious doctrines but those doctrines can produce very real and very evident fruit in your life and mine 
It means that as we live through this pandemic, as we watch the news and read the newspapers, as we interact with social media, we can rejoice that we have nothing to fear. We can rejoice because we know that we have in Christ Jesus an eternal hope. And Paul says that through these experiences, God develops a greater, a deeper, a more substantial hope in our lives. And Paul says that this hope will never, ever disappoint. Now, don't get me wrong. The pain that people endure right now is very real. And the loss felt by many, many believers is just as deep. And yet hear what Paul says in his second letter to the Corinthians. He says our present troubles are small and they won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. You know, I don't think I would have the confidence to say that, nor to write that. I don't think I would have the confidence to tell people that their present experiences of grief are small and won't last for long. But when Paul speaks it, I take him seriously because he was a man who was beaten, a man who was flogged, who was shipwrecked, who was in danger wherever he went for the sake of the gospel. And he understood that this present suffering, however deep, however grievous, was small compared to the glory that awaited him in Christ Jesus. And Paul finally says, and this hope will not disappoint. Paul knew that this hope would not disappoint. Paul's friend Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, that we're born again into a living hope. We receive the spirit, the spirit who's a seal, who guarantees our inheritance. But Paul knew as he walked with Jesus as he rejoiced in the tough times, that that hope which he received by faith was cultivated, was honed, was strengthened, was deepened. I just want to close by sharing with you an example, an example from Paul's life that reveals how he himself rejoiced even in the tough times. In Acts chapter 16, we find that Paul and Silas are at Philippi. And wherever they go, wherever they did, they are followed by a slave girl who had an evil spirit. And one day, Paul just turned and rebuked that spirit and delivered this girl in Jesus' name. We find in verse 27 that a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them to be stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and they were thrown in prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure that they didn't escape. So the jailer put them in the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and that all the prisoners were listening. Let me ask you this morning, do you think that that's how you would have responded? I don't think it's how I would have responded. If I'd been flogged and beaten and put in stocks, imprisoned for my faith in Jesus, I don't think I would at midnight still be praising and worshipping and singing hymns to God. I think I might have been moaning. I think I might have complained. I think I might instead even keep my mouth closed and my head down, hoping that I didn't trouble or aggravate any of the other prisoners. But we find that Paul and Silas were still free. 
they were in chains, they were in stocks, but their hearts were free to worship, not despite, but even because of the struggle that they were going through. And then in verse 26, suddenly, that word pops up so many times in the New Testament, suddenly God did something, suddenly there was a massive earthquake. And the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed that the prisoners had escaped. So he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted, stop, don't kill yourself. We are all here. The story goes on to tell us how Paul and Silas had the joy of leading him to Jesus and how he and his household were baptised. And so, friends, however hard this is, however much you struggle or wrestle with these passages, I want to encourage you, even in your struggle, in your suffering, in your grief, to continue to rejoice. Ask God in his grace that Jesus would come brighter to you in the darkness, that he would become sweeter even in the bitterness. I want to encourage you to ask him to cultivate those things that he's already imparted to you, to cultivate endurance and character and hope. And as Paul writes in verse 5, and praise God, this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So what I want to do is to spend a moment just to pray together. I want to ask you to bring to God now your suffering and your struggle and your sorrow. To bring to God your frustration and your grief. And Lord, we recognise this morning that there's things that we don't understand about you. There's things that you permit that we wish that you didn't. But Lord, we rejoice in you. And we rejoice this morning in the very goodness of God. And Lord, as we rejoice in you, we pray that you would cultivate in our lives endurance. Hebrew says that we're not those who shrink back, but we're those who press on and overcome. And Lord, this morning we want to endure, we want to overcome in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you work in character within us. And as we look back over our lives, we realise that we've drawn closer to you, not in the good times but in the bad. So I just want to encourage you to make that commitment, Lord, I want to draw closer to you, to remember the promise of scripture that as we draw close to him, he draws close to us. Just receive this morning that closeness, receive this morning the intimacy of his spirit. Lord, allow this time to be such a time where you squeeze us and mould us and fashion us to be more like Jesus. Lord, we're sorry that so often we focus on the externals when you're wanting to work a wonder in terms of the internal. Lord, bring a change to hearts and minds today in Jesus' name. And Lord, thank you for the hope that we received 
of eternal life when we were born again by your spirit. But as we endure and as we become changed in terms of our character, our nature, Lord, we'd want to open up to every new work of your spirit in our life. In order that we wouldn't be so focused on the things of this life, but that we would have our minds renewed, that we would have our hearts transformed, that we would become people who are far more spiritual and far less carnal. Well, thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. And so, Lord, change us and transform us. Lord, we don't go back to who we were pre-pandemic. Lord, we're a people who are on the move. We want to press on. We want to be changed and transformed. We want to move on. And we want to see Jesus glorified in and through our lives in his name. Amen. Um. If you like what you heard, there are ways to connect to Ridgeway Community Church. You can connect by our website at www.ridgewaycommunity.church or drop us a message via chris at ridgewaycommunity.church. You can also join our virtual Sunday Zoom service at 10.30am. If you have teenagers in years 7 to 11, they can also connect with our youth ministry. For more information, please drop us a message with details provided. We would love to hear from you. Many blessings from Ridgeway Community Church, Didcot.